Are you looking to achieve your most holistic and healthier self? Then Holistic Health and Wellness is the show for you. Today I'll be introducing you to five practitioners, each with incredible knowledge to share. Thank you to all of you for joining us today on Holistic Health and Wellness. I'm excited to be able to chat to all of you and we're going to kick things off chatting to Tony. Tony, you are an addiction recovery practitioner who uses the principles of the law of attraction to help patients through their recovery process. I know that this has been part of your own journey. Tell us a little bit more about that. Sure, thank you so much for the opportunity. Now, my journey in recovery started some 32 years ago. And 32 years ago, I never ever thought that recovery would be a possibility in my life. I got to a stage with my addiction where it was suicide and that was it. And I actually planned my suicide on a number of occasions. But fortunately on that fateful day, the 3rd of April, 1989, uh, it was a decision that was taken by someone else to actually take me into Alcoholics Anonymous and I'm glad that I followed through. I crawled into Alcoholics Anonymous on that day and I never looked back since then. So ever since then as a qualified social worker and a recovering alcoholic, I've dedicated my life and my passion to helping those who want to embrace this journey of recovery. I sincerely believe that recovery is a journey of, of connectedness, connecting with yourself, which I lost many, many years ago. And I actually moved away from who I was, I moved away from my family, and I actually took this journey into the unknown, into the darkness. And it was really, really treacherous for me as well. It became very much an opportunity for me to start embracing this journey when I f worked with people from throughout the world that were wanting this part of their lives to be taken care of as well. It was an amazing opportunity to, for me to dedicate my life to helping those and it became a full-time passion and a profession for me. Over the years, I've worked with a number of individuals, the couples, the families and the youth as well too. And I sincerely believe that I can take this message of hope to the youth as well because they are the ones that still, still seem to be struggling with the addiction and other decisions that they struggle to make as well. I've incorporated, I incorporate the principles of the law of attraction because I sincerely believe that it's not only the number of days you've been clean, but the quality of those days that count more. So having brought that in from, from many years in my life, I actually took to the law of attraction some years ago and it was, it's become part of my life as well. It's basically on your thought process that you actually determine the results you get. So as a recovering alcoholic, I always thought that I would never be able to embrace this, this journey. But I try to impact this on other people to, and for them to understand that you can actually enjoy your recovery without having to depend on any mood altering chemicals. And that's been a fascinating part of this journey for many, many people as well. So over these years, I've worked with a number of people that have been involved, have been addicted to drugs, hardcore drugs, alcohol, social media, pornography, and sex as well too. And that's become a very, very crucial aspect that I had to cope with or deal with during the lockdown as well. We found that a number of people were taken to addictive behavior, addictive uh, uh, patterns, because they were losing out this opportunity to go to work, to be involved in the work environment. And it became very, very stressful to them, suddenly discovering that they work from home and they had to contend with the challenges that were now faced with the pandemic. So I've reached out to many people over this period of time. Amazingly, there's been more people reaching out during this particular time because they started to discover who they are. And along that way, they realized that they needed the support and the guidance that I can offer them as well. Well, Tony, really, we could carry on for hours about this and I can't wait to be able to share your details um, with people in our community and our extended community who can be in touch with you because there are just so many variants of addiction um, that most people don't even know about. So thank you so much for sharing with us. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you for the opportunity. I'm grateful as well. Welcome, Warren. It's great to have you with us. We're going to be chatting about all things EcuDetox and your journey. Thank you, Mandy. Well, much like Tony, uh, 18 years ago, I was homeless on the streets of Durban because of all of my addictions. Um, I was fortunate to be given a chance at recovery. I spent nine months in inpatient treatment after which I started my life again and this is also at the point of suicide. Um, I then went and studied counselling part-time in the evenings and then I ran a support group for two years after quali qualifying on a Friday night 
and um, after doing that for two years I looked back at my support uh, my success rate and I had a 1% success rate and I was just about to give up as a counselor when a friend of mine said to me Warren man is a three-part being spirit soul and body um, you're dealing with the soul the mind uh, but it's attached to a body and when the body is unhealthy the mind cannot function properly the brain chemistry is not stable and that made sense to me he said to me you need to detox so i went overseas i became uh, an acu detox practitioner i then went to new york to become a specialist i studied under dr michael richards the late dr michael richards who founded nada internationally which is now in more than 40 countries and um, I practiced for about six years after which I became a trainer and um, but I then started training people countrywide and I've trained hundreds of practitioners countrywide um, but over the years besides learning how powerful this modality is using acupuncture detoxification to bring about a healthy body which then brings about a healthy mind which then can be shaped um, I realized that the theory of Chinese medicine was, although it's so simple, it's so powerful. And the theory of Chinese medicine says all disease in the body or mind is caused by the presence of a toxin. Now, you've got two categories of toxins. You've got the physical ones, which are uh, chemicals, alcohol, pharmaceuticals metals objects bacteria fungus virus parasites my word and then you've got the um the abstract ones or the non-physical which are thoughts memories beliefs emotions traumas and ultimately paradigms if those can be toxic as well and create mental illness so the theory is very simple remove the toxin the illness goes away and what i've discovered over the years is by complementing acu detox with whatever is indicated for that client we're able to try to uh, treat whatever disease comes into our our practice whether it's uh, parkinson's disease or cancer or emphysema or endometriosis or migraines or interstitial cystitis or whatever wow as long as you it's simply ulcers in the bladder it's a big complicated word for ulcers in the bladder so as long as you complement uh, acute detox whether it's counseling or a, a Chinese herbal formula or homeopathy or reflexology or Reiki or whatever whatever is indicated for that person then the healing takes place sure so it's not just addiction it's also physical and mental illness too Wow, as with Tony and I'm sure with all of you, we could carry on for hours about these topics and to our viewers, we are going to have extended interviews going forward on these topics. Today we're just sharing with you a brief synopsis of the incredible knowledge that this team has to share with you. Thank you so much, Warren. Next up, we're chatting to Jason and you're going to be telling us a story. So it's actually my story. So my story um, comprised of a self-reflection and the, the years that led me up to when I moved to Dubai and that was in the year 2016 to 2017. During this time, I was doing a lot of self-reflection on the process of life and wanting to understand it. There was a, a deep calling within me to, to come to terms with it. And during the time I met an Arab man who was my first mentor and he taught me the first morning prayer that the Muslims actually do and what that prayer represents and that first prayer is actually the surrendering of life back to God and during this time during my reflection was I was looking at how the human body is formed in the mother of the womb and the child touching the nose or touching the ear is not worried about the formation but the moment we come out we're like thanks I can handle my own life mm, and correct. look at how many people can truly handle that sure that's incredibly powerful so from there, I adopted a self-practice and living in a moment-to-moment -moment awareness of source, the extension of God. If you were to take the light that reflects over here, the light particle that's over here, these are all the extensions of that one ultimate source, God. And that particle, you could say, is the soul. So in an individual coming to that breath awareness, now my breath awareness started in 2018, where I became actively aware of each breath. 
And that was a process in itself, but what that enabled was moving away from being reactive to being responsive. So the purpose of what it is that I love to do and actually take out to the world is the process of living as self. So self being that eternal, being able to rest in it, and then from there to meet life and what's required. So here we look at meeting it with your health, your connections, your purpose, your sense of experiences that matter to you as an individual and the process of self-study. Wow. Um, I've seen firsthand how important breathing is and the different reactions that you can get um, with breathing. So I'm definitely going to be chatting to you in my own personal capacity. So if we look at what the breath represents, and here we look at the sympathetic response from the autotomic nervous system, and that's your shallow breathing. So here, if you were to be breathing shallow, you'd have a shallow life. And the narrative here is to move into a full breath to enable yourself to have a full life. This is where you apply effort. Now, what's life without effort? It's kind of meaningless. So we apply effort to wanting to experience more in life. So the man that goes to the bar is wanting to experience something that's liberating. The man that goes to church is also seeking something more from what's going on here. And the man that does the self-practice is also seeking something more. So when we look at life and applying effort, life I've come to understand comprises of three parts. There's the birth, the living and the death. Just focusing on the living aspect. So coming into account of living. So here we look at enabling the response system. Responding to an outcome always enables a better outcome. Whereas reaction is basically pouring the petrol onto the fire. So here this plays out in dynamics between intimate partners, non-intimate partners, children and alike. Jason, who would actually come to you for your expertise? So what I've experienced is that individuals are actually seeking the self-fulfillment. And for me it's to meet the individual where, who and what they are. And what I've realized is the flexibility of the teacher to meet the student and not the flexibility of the student to be with the teacher. So from there I work on six guiding principles. The first one we look at to ethics and this is basically righteousness. So we look at how individuals ethics determine the actions they take out to the world. So it's either good deed or bad deed. And we look at how actions over time form habits. Habits over time form a character. A character forms a personality. Personality basically forms your destiny. So destiny here is the pathway of life and being responsive enables you to control about 50 to 60 percent of your destiny. The other 50 to 40 percent is life meeting you. These are the circumstances, events and situations that we find ourselves in, whether it be pleasurable or traumatic, but it's in the way we handle it and it's in the way that we handle it that truly counts. Going into the second part here, we look at the disciplines, the duties and the first one for all the basis of my teaching is holding God at the forefront of all words, all deeds, all actions and, and residing with your source. Third aspect, we look at the body. The body goes through an experience. An experience can either be pleasurable or traumatic. Based on that, we have an understanding. With the body now, we look at alleviating the toxins. And this is where Warren had a wonderful explanation of what the toxins are. So we look at basic alleviation to create space within the being. So space, you could look at you know, love or fear. Fear is a sense of uh, constriction. Love, the sense of opening. So we try to open up the body to be receptive to life and what is required of you. Jason, I'm flabbergasted that this all comes down to breathing, um, which is the essence of life at the end of the day. So thank you so much for sharing your story with us. And next we're going to be chatting to Dan. You're going to be chatting to us about kahuna massage and yoga and astrology. So the work that I do, which I do with my partner Tracy, revolves around the body, the mind, and the soul, just like all of us here. And working with kahuna is going into the body to release what's going on in the mind as well. So working on the body is not just about working muscles, working tendons, pushing lymph. It's also about releasing blockages that are going on within the emotional body the spiritual body, the energetic body. We aren't just physical creatures. There's layers to our being. You have different bodies on different levels. And working on one works on another because they're all interconnected with one another. I can feel those eyes looking into me. <laughs> 
And how does astrology play into what you do? So astrology comes from the mind more than the body, but a lot of the work that we do is centered around who are you. Mm -hmm. And if you look at things in the world that people consider uh, like terrible things like world hunger or wealth disparity, gender inequality, these are all things that have a very similar root. And that root is, who am I? As soon as we can answer that question, we can get to the heart of those issues. And what it comes down to is we see ourselves as separate from everything around us. As these separate entities walking around interacting with other separate entities. And this is something that our work tries to break the boundaries of. Break the obstacles to so that you can see actually no I'm connected to everything around me. So for people who feel that they don't know their purpose in life or what they literally are doing on this earth those are the sort of people that you would be able to guide through a process. Very much so. Also people who are just looking to understand themselves on a more mm -hmm. integrated level, on a more holistic level, on a deeper level. People are really yearning to find out who they are. We just don't know. We, we say we this, we this, we this, we this. But then we realize actually these things change. They're flexible, they're movable, they're transitory. What's the essence of me that never changes? And that's what connects us to everyone and everything in our lives. It's incredibly powerful what you're saying because I think everybody went through so many changes due to COVID and lockdown and had time to actually look into themselves and ask these questions that you are able to help somebody with. So, wow, thank you so much. And I have no doubt that you are gonna be inundated with people who need to find themselves and need to find what their purpose is. So thank you. Next, we're gonna be chatting to Jono, who's going to be sharing with us his journey, as well as how this incredible team actually came together. Thank you, Mandy. Um, hi, I'm Jono, and uh, I'm really pleased to be sitting with you all. And the idea of the, a facility like this was birthed while I was on the banks of the Henlops River in a homeless and rehabilitation center in 2003. Um, at that stage, I think I'd been through uh, several rehabilitation centers myself battling with an addiction. Um, Subsequently, I got into to deal with my own um, disease. I looked at alternative therapies, and it was like a washing machine. Um, everyone offered you a, a therapy, and they said, "We can fix you. We've got this." And I thought, "That's that's 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 great. The shortest time possible, the least effort, or if the more I pay, it'll work better." And so there were all these offerings for healing at that time in in 2000 early 2000s in this country for us. And a lot of them were labor intensive. Uh, the treatment models were labor intensive or um, very uh, based on a pharmaceutical approach. And so there was an extreme um, issue that I found of unregulated trauma that started to appear within my life. And having been through numerous rehabs, been through psychiatrists, psychiatric facilities, um, the works, I was still dealing with the wounds underlying and I just learned to suppress it and depress it over time and mask it. And um, I've worked with trauma and worked with people involved in addiction um, for many years and I have great passion, a great passion and compassion. But um, what, what got me to a point of crisis, and uh, there's an interesting word in the word crisis, it's a Chinese word, within the word crisis is it's it's a character has two symbols and uh, one is opportunity and the one that one is danger and uh, i was fortunate in my life to always use in a chaos use it as a springboard yep for opportunity opportunity and um, we are sitting here on planet earth and people are bursting at the seams and a lot of the people that are sensitive are not happy with where they're at 
and they realize the disconnection is so real and what they've been accustomed to trying to fulfill themselves realizing that they are they don't know who they are and the things that they've been doing and the therapies that they're following the beliefs that they've had are not working and um, I was in dismay last year um, being di diagnosed with lymphoma and it was uh, quite hard to to handle uh, in terms of um, being a holistic healer alternative healer um, how do I own that and it came down to not regulating my own my own body within my own system within my own self and um, depressing my own needs ignoring them being ignorant like like we all do and being a very physically fit and well person I never realized that my emotions would have eventually move into my physical being and threaten my life and I started this wellness center based on the therapies in here to save my life so the ozone pod that I had here was in my garage last year and I was treating myself after chemotherapy every two or three days just to exceed to get to move from being a survivor to being a living human being and being connected and so every single person in here has, has a therapy and has a story that we can share in, and we can bring about and facilitate um, healing and my idea of the centers really was for people like me that were unregulated that felt that they were perfectly healthy and a couple of emotions and a little bit of anger wouldn't get you anywhere but it's not to put you in fear but to realize that there is a real threat with what's going on emotionally and within us and uh, what's being offered is was unable to regulate me and so I found a lovely team of different type of modalities different individuals um, these guys are not any breath work there's things like yoga you know from a man a strong masculine direction yoga was something that was not I was accustomed to you know I'm used to having watermelons under my arms and big gym and pushed and extreme testosterone not realizing that there is a sacred sen a tender masculine that is also there that is beautiful that is strong that is powerful and uh, doing things like yoga which we are we, we offer here um, really have allowed me to stretch and move energy within myself the acu detox um, you know the knowledge Warren has on 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 the body and how it works in conjunction with toxicity is really awesome um, we also do distant healing we offer distant healing a team doing trauma release um, the same kind of thing uh, um, counseling Tony's expertise and the wealth of knowledge here just to be able to share and allow you to really connect within you so that you can heal what a powerful team of people and just thank you for your vision in bringing this all together because people need alternatives they need to know that there are other ways of dealing with things that life throws us all the time. To our viewers, thank you so much for joining us. I have no doubt that all of you want to spend more time listening to this incredible group of men. And if you are wanting to get more involved with us at Holistic Health and Wellness, please get in touch by emailing hello at belito.tv. Till next time.